Hi guys and welcome to the Stability Rogue Guide for 7.35. So in this guide, like the other ones I've done, I'm going through the single target legendaries and talents and then the AoE talents and legendaries and how to maximize your DPS. So I'll get into single target now and I'll be showing what to do on the dummy later. So for single target, what you want to be taking is um, Master of Stability. You want to be using this because... Um, Later on down in the talents, you want to be using Substifuge, which is your ability to requiring stealth can still be used for 3 seconds after stealth breaks. And it also increases the amount of the 1 second of Shadow Dance, which is just really, really good. Because obviously when you're in Shadow Dance, you can use your stealth abilities, and your stealth abilities give more combo points. So you see Backstab here only gives 1, but when you're in stealth, a Shadow Strike is 2, which is obviously really, really good. And it hits really, really hard. So yeah, Master of Stability, so that... The five seconds after, you can still use your Shadow Strike. So, for example, now I'm going to get Master of Stability, and I've still I can still use my Stealth abilities. So my um, Shadow Stabs are hitting really really hard. Just quickly go back into Stealth here. Um, next, what you want to be taking is Vigor. You literally just always want to be taking Vigor. This is just such a good talent. Increase your maximum energy by 50, so you can get off more Shadow Strikes when you come out of your um, Stealth and Energy Regeneration, which is just, in general just going to increase your DPS by so so much. The next one's down to you. I usually take Cheat Death for raids just for the fact that it will save you on so many times. And it will just, like, you can get so much DPS out of this. There's been a lot of times where we've had a rogue in raid and they've been what they've been hit by a melee boss, but they've just kept DPS in because of Cheat Death keeps them up. The next one really doesn't matter, but if you want to increase DPS, you want to take Prey on the Weak. Because Prey on the Weak increases your damage done to target stunned by 10% and Tangling Shadow doesn't really do anything and neither does Strike from the Shadows so you just want to take Prey on the Weak just to you know increase your damage but it's really whatever you want to take. Next one you want to be taking um, Dark Shadow you see well, while Shadow Dance is active all damage is dealt is increased by 30% this is just crazy crazy good because you know you're always in Shadow Dance whenever it's up and whenever you use um, your abilities Shadow Dance is going to have a reduced cooldown so every time you're using a um, combo point regenerator as it's going to lower the cooldown on shadow dance so you have shadow dance up a lot so that's where you get the full use out of alarticity is not that good and neither is enveloping shadows so you just want to take as well death from above due to the fact it hits so so hard with five combo points so yeah you want to be taking that and you want to try and tie it in that every time you have a death from above symbols of death is up because um if you have the two set from tos so for subs, what you mainly want to be having is, um, for, for legendary-wise, for single target, you, you want to be having the shoulders and the hands. The shoulders and the hands, because the hands give you more damage when you use Touch of Death. And um, so you want to be using the, the shoulders and the hands, and then the four set from Antorus for your maximum DPS. But quickly go into it and uh, say it. So what it is, is um, each combo point spent reduces the cooldown on Symbols of the Death. And obviously tied over in the hands, you're going to get increased DPS when you use Touch of Death. And Backstab and Shadow Strike have a 4% chance to grant you Shadow Gestures, causing your next finishing move to refund 100% of the combo point spent. Obviously that's just insane. Obviously if you Eviscerate and then it procs, you can use Eviscerate again. But yeah, just make sure you have the um, the shoulders and the hands. But the 2 set from a TOS is also good. It's kind of what the Legendary does. So Symbols of Death increase your damage done by an additional 10%. So you just want to always tie in, make sure you have symbols up when you um, death from above. But first off, what you want to start with, you want to start off with... Um, so obviously you want to open with a Shadow Strike and try and get up to 5 combo points. And then now you can use symbols of death because that's going to increase your DPS. So you'll use a... Um, you'll put that Night Blade down, which will increase the DPS done to the target. When you're backstabbing, you always want to make sure it's hitting from behind. Use Eviscerate. And now I'm going to use um, Shadow Blaze, which obviously increases your regeneration of Shadow Points. Now I'm going to use Death from Above, which is going to hit really hard. I'm just going to make sure I'm always using um, always using Shadow Dance on cooldown with Shadow Strike, and just try and use Shadow Strike as much as possible. So as you can see, Shadow Dance is always off, is back off cooldown. And now what I want to do is um, just make sure Night Blade's back up. See, now I've got um, Death from Above and Shadow Blade, so I'm just going to use that quickly. So they line up quite nicely. Both of them, so they can hit really, really hard. But yeah, you want to make sure Nightblade is always on the target. If you don't have it up, it's just a really big waste of DPS. 
as well, tied in with the shoulders. The shoulders are so good because obviously when you have Vanish, you can go into Vanish and come back out and get that guaranteed 100% crit. And if you want really, really big DPS, you can Vanish and use Death from above, so it crits really, really hard. But yeah, you want to make sure you always have Nightblade up and just hitting the target really hard. As you can see, every time I use a Nightblade there, it reduces the cooldown by uh, by 9 seconds, which is really, really good. So I got that Shadow Dance back up and it ties in nicely with the old Dark Shadow. So now I'll quickly get into um, the legendaries. But yeah, also the artifact ability, you want to be using that as frequently as possible. Because the artifact ability, uh, Gorfin's um, Gormor's Bite, uh, grants 30 energy and it also makes your next combo point spenders cost no energy. So it could just give you a lot, a lot more energy to spend. And the most things you'll find with sub is that you'll have, you won't have enough energy to get off them... Um, like the last few combo points, which is why Touch of Death is really, really good because it gives you that energy and so is Gorfins. But yeah, for AoE, if you want to be doing AoE damage as sub, you literally just need the cloak. If you don't have the cloak, you're not going to be doing a lot of damage at all. The ideal setup is going for shoulders and back. The reason you want to do this is more than likely if you're in a Mythic Plus or something and you have the back on, you can go into stealth and just come out with one big fan of knives. And obviously because you have guaranteed crit when you come out, all these hits are going to be hitting so, so hard. And yeah, so you want to be using Fan of Knives and then just Eviscerates with the combo points you get. The reason you want to do this because the amount of targets you hit with um, Shuriken Storm increases the next damage of your Eviscerate. So you just want to try and um, just use Shadow Dance whenever you can. And just use, when you're going to Shadow Dance, just spam your Eviscerates and Shuriken Storm. And just use... Um, just use your touches of death when you can, and death from above when you can. But yeah, that's about it for um, the sub AoE. It's not that good, unless you have the cloak. If you don't have the cloak, you're not going to be pumping out a lot of numbers anyway. But sub has really, really strong um, single target, and it's really fun to play. But its AoE is lacking a lot, but still. If you want a good single target DPS in raids, you really want a sub rogue. It's not got the um, RNG that um, Assassination has. But his DPS is pretty stable. Stable. If you have the right legendaries, you won't be like fluctuating like Assassin Rogue does, where sometimes you'll do insane DPS and other times you won't. But yeah, that's it for the sub guide. Like and subscribe if you want to see more videos and comment if I missed anything out. And yeah, see you in the next one.